So, good day, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, dear grinder, and welcome for this fireside chat with Giacomo Trent. Some more this later. First, a few housekeeping notes about Startup Grind. So, Startup Grind, we are the largest community of startups, founders, and innovators in the world. And we try, and our aim is to educate entrepreneurs, ventures, so that you can grow on your path. And we do that by having a few simple rules. We aim to help others to give first, and not taking, to make friends and not only connections, and also to inspire via our fireside chatters and other events so that you really are better prepared for your path. Further on, you can also join us on the Microsoft Teams or on the Startup Grind Luxembourg community to exchange and chat further on. And during this fireside chat during this event, we you will be able to share your comments or your questions either via the chat or through the Q and A question. And now, without further ado, I would like to th uh, welcome Giacomo. Hi, Giacomo. Correct. Thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having accepted uh, to join us for this fireside chat. Um, in order to start, would you just be able to give, to say in a few words, what ARCA Properties is? We will delve a little bit later on, but what in, in a nutshell, for those who are maybe not aware, what is ARCA Properties? Mm -hmm. um, ARCA Properties, in a nutshell, is um, a prop tech venture and a short-term corporate housing operator with the goal to create uh, stays that inspire and offer a feel of convenience and home-like comfort. So that's, I would say, the best way to explain what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you. And uh, I mean, that's something what you're offering now, but how did, it, did you come to this? What how did you identify this pain point or did you witness it yourself, the, the, the one that you are covering today or was the initial pain point quite a little bit different? How did you get there? Mm -hmm. I mean, Arca is now, we actually celebrated our fourth birthday a few weeks back and it was an incredible event. We had over like almost 200 people who, who came and it was all clients, partners, um, supporters, and like people who have been with us since we have started our journey. And uh, the journey is actually that, um, I mean, the idea and what we do today is obviously shaped by the experiences we were able to gather over the last years. And these experiences, the goal is always to follow uh, your clients and find the pain points of your clients and to try uh, to offer solutions actually for these kind of pain points. So when we started, um, I mean, the original story is that uh, uh, my co-founder, uh, Peter Banzu Kim, actually, he comes from South Korea and we were part of the same business circle. So um, we were a part of an organization which is called Kairos and Kairos is an association that uh, regroups a lot of entrepreneurs around the world and that they want to, entrepreneurs, they want to have an impact and, and have it make, it make a change in today's society. And so... They had a summit in Barcelona, so we met in Barcelona, and there we talked about how can we optimize housing and how can we transform an apartment which is vacant into a revenue-driving entity. So, and vacancies can occur on due to multiple uh, reasons, right? So, vacancies can be um, for 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 business purposes, for construction purposes. So, there are many reasons why real estate is left empty and is not utilized. So our initial idea was really to, to tap into this and create a service in order to transform these apartments into a revenue-generating entity. And it, 
by launching this activity in Luxembourg, as well with my third co-founder, Matthias. Like, so we have so three co-founders in total. We combined a lot of our expertise and we kicked off the, the concept. And the more we kind of went into it, we identified a big need for corporates. So corporates, they have a reoccurring issue, which is they, in markets like Luxembourg and similar capitals uh, that um, attract a lot of HQs and workforce, um, oftentimes housing becomes challenging and finding suitable housing solutions becomes challenging. And so what, but the companies at the same time, they need to hire employees to actually, you know, bring them and relocate them to their markets, even though remote becomes more and more popular. This is still a pretty big topic in today's world. And um, so what happens is that these companies, they need to find the temporary housing solutions for their employees. And that's where we tapped into a niche and we created our entire value proposition, prop, uh, value proposition around that niche. So we, we were with our clients identifying all the pain points that they have within the organization. And so moving forward, we more and more developed our value proposition um, based on the feedback from what we could gather on the market. So that's kind of like a short, short intro. Obviously, there's, there's way more in between uh, uh, on how eventually what we were the beginnings and, and how we ended up until this point today, but uh, but that's a little bit the short intro. Okay, that's uh, one thing. And I mean, uh, you said your co-founders, you knew each other before, you had already some ventures before, or was it a fresh uh, venture? With um, where the initial idea was discussed was a fresh venture. So, um, but sometimes you don't need in, in life, there are sometimes moments when you, it just matches, right? So there, you don't have to, um, you feel when there's a, when the right brains meet in the, in the right room, you can feel uh, um, where energy flows and where ideas uh, flourish. So um, and with my third co-founder, uh, there I had a previous relationship. So there we were actually working already before on projects. So there it was a trust relationship which already existed. So, and we all complemented each other from our expertise. So I have more of an operational hospitality background um, since all my family from the Croatian, I'm half Croatian, half German, excuse me. And, and so I was always more driven into hospitality uh, by my family, like from the um, business activity from my family. And then uh, Peter has more as a business analyst and strategist role in the funds and like other aspects uh, in, in, in this regard. And then Mateus, he's more into real estate um, and the business development side. So we are kind of like complement, we build a, a good trio, uh, which is important by when you want to choose your founders and you need a very solid ground, like the foundation has to be very solid. And then the fact of complementing uh, your skill sets and your your expertise that's the second point which needs to be you know well balanced right so mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh, i mean you mentioned the pain point uh, you identified initially uh, how long did it take to really fine tune the pain pain because very often i mean uh, it is okay you guess that's the pain point but then by gathering information, you fine-tune the pain point, uh, let's say so, or fine-tune the problem, let's call it like that. Um, how did you go about it? I mean, you mentioned that you had been in contact with potential users, corporates, for example. And um, how did that evolve from the initial idea you had of the pain identified to more or less the first, let's say, so the first prototype of a, of a service, of a solution? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the, the initial idea, an idea has to make sense, right? So the first point is that you need to, it has to be logical, right? And when an idea is, makes sense, then um, you can kind of like dive more into it. So if, if there is a need, you can identify this need further and to the initial need was confirmed by the fact that we actually received a project that we can work on so when we initially started the company we didn't have a concept uh, no no uh, open company it was simply a call uh, which we made and then we were able to strike a meeting 
And on that meeting, we explained more the idea and the concept behind it. And that that was validated by the first client. And so the first client validated our assumptions by saying, okay, look, let's work together. So that's the first kind of step. So that once you have a, an idea that you can validate with a client, and if the client is ready to pay for your service, right, or for your product, that's the first point, right? And then the moment you dive into that uh, first, you know, you took the first dive and you you, you swim, uh, you will find out more and more the longer you go, right? So it's more of um, by gathering them more and more clients and experience, we were able to see how companies, um, what exactly are their pain points, right? So we, we, we just touched the surface and the further you go in, you can, you can narrow it down. And by narrowing it down, you can create a way more solid and robust value proposition. And the more solid and robust your value proposition is, the higher you can charge for it, right? So the higher people are willing to actually pay for it and the more of a competitive advantage you have um, compared to, to others, right? But coming a little bit back, I mean, it's very specific because you, um, I mean, it's a service, but you also need, let's say, the, the raw material to provide the service. And the raw material is the one which is scarce, I mean, real estate. So how did you go about that? I mean, uh, okay, there may be clients, but uh, if they, for example, uh, the, if they say, okay, it's nice, yeah, well, we would like to love to, to have your service, but then uh, how did you go about of finding, for example, the locations, the premises, and so on? How, how did that go? Yeah. Uh, before I answer this point, I just want to uh, comment to Marta Correra. And I agree that not every idea has to be fully logical, totally. Uh, but obviously, it makes it easier if, if things uh, add up uh, and, 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 and it's, it's straightforward. Then obviously, the, the initial start is just uh, quicker, maybe. Um, but um, to your point is that at the end of the day, um, the way how apartments for us or real estate is or the partners or clients that we onboard to actually have our product, which we sell, which is an apartment. So it's more of a supplier, right? They give us a supplier that we can work with. And, and here at the beginning um, in the market, it is true that these, this is one of the most common questions I always get asked, how do we actually find our units and what do we do? And, um, and here the, from a, from a client point, of, I mean, obviously you need to have both sides. So you have the client who rents it and then you have the client who actually gives you the product, right? And there you also need to do the same exercise, finding out what are their pain points. And the moment we launched into the, the business, we identified that all of the things that usually people don't like about real estate agencies, they don't like that it's not digitalized, everything, like people don't really take care of the unit, you know, they still have to manage certain things. They don't have a reporting, um, also in terms of revenue generations. And, and then sometimes it's not flexible enough because if they enter a contract three years, they never know what's going to happen inside of the tenant. So by listening very carefully to these stories, right, you can position yourself as a provider saying like, look, work with Arca and we're going to give you a way better experience by offering X, Y, Z. And so this allows you then to, to attract um, leads, right? And then this, that story at the beginning, I mean, obviously you can combine it with marketing and, and certain placements, but, but it, it was a very lean approach by, by simply listening to the customer and then using the existing network that we had to, to gain the first traction. And once you have first traction and first success, uh, you can use that to leverage that as a credibility, right? And then the moment you have more credibility, now people just come to us, right? People, I mean, we almost currently, um, our inbox is like uh, weekly, we receive new projects to work on, like where people want to like uh, present us uh, the, 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 the the apartment. But, and now we go more into the volume deals. So we're going now into, we rent or manage entire floors or buildings, um, we are working with real estate uh, developers to actually optimize their performance, right? To, re to create a better package as a, um, for their investors, right? So that the return on investment becomes better. So those are all things that the further you go, again, the credibility fuels uh, the, the, this, this, the scaling of the product, right? Okay. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you act 
really you spotted that the, there is a need to be to have a middleman an intermediary and you're providing this missing link to both parts of the market i mean you provide the services so that the ones who are looking for rental housing and so on or bespoke services and those who have it in order to fill it but uh, do you see yourself more like let's say uh, a little bit like we we work this means who take who rent huge plots and then sub rent it or is it more that you say okay no we provide the intelligence that i now say to the landlord huh? uh, to the real estate owner and we pro as you a little bit touch upon we provide the intelligence to them and then so that they offer that their premises suit better the needs of uh, the the potential clients mm -hmm. that's a very good question um in a sense where the way how we want to position ourselves and that's also kind of the story we started as a simple operator so we just came in and then we said that we're going to manage your apartment on behalf of the owner and we can either do this by managing and charging a commission like a rental uh, fee for the a success fee technically for activity or we guarantee a rent and then we sublease it so that's kind of at the core that's what our business model is based on so um and 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 we are building a hospitality brand so our the idea is to really create a brand with this activity and to what we really want to do is to sh to create the future of rental tomorrow because the future of rental tomorrow is not it is fully digitalized automated uh, flexible rents and you it's more like a service, right? Like Netflix is a subscription, right? So renting will become more like a, a subscription type of model in the future where people don't want to have, they, wanna, they don't want to be blocked in contracts. They don't want to deal with their furniture. It's more out of a convenience need from the customer that this is more fueling the, the, the growth of that particular industry. And so on top of that, we want to build the tech to support all of this, right? So at the core, we built our hospitality brand and around it, we are building all the, the tech solutions that are needed to improve our tenant experience, to streamline the, the booking uh, and the, the rental uh, uh, that everything can be fully uh, done online within a few clicks. So um, so it's really that at the core, we, we, we are growing in terms of our portfolio and we're becoming this let's say, a service apartment operator, and we have the hospitality brand with with different uh, um, uh, price categories, right? You have more luxurious and corporate or low budget. And then we are providing that um, new rental experience, what we call of the future, that is uh, fully flexible. And on top, we, we, we back it up with our tax solutions that will give us and that give us as well the competitive edge and uh, and how we can you know fuel our growth uh, moving forward yeah okay and did you you touch already upon how that uh, in the beginning you had this idea of the service and then you moved on then you scaled or you moved a little bit in different direction or you grew your portfolio um the the thing is you also touch upon the as a service rental as a service uh, and that's what i always found very interesting uh, because in my opinion uh, each business if it's possible should be able to provide uh, to sell it as a service in order to have recurring revenues and not only one off shot and how does it work with you for example let's say there's one of the, the viewers here uh okay he likes to uh, he she likes to attract talents so they relocate here to luxembourg for xyz reason let's call it like that and of course luxembourg problem housing so then uh, they come to you and how is the process working from that side i mean i as a corporate from my employees needs housing how does it work um 
So there are different sizes of companies, right? So if you have, let's take the biggest size, um, they have a reoccurring volume on a year-to-year -year basis of workers that they have to bring to certain locations. And that creates an incredible stress moment and pain point for HR departments, procurement departments, who never had to deal with, it's not their job to find housing, right? Their job is that the worker can come and they can have a great experience, that they get onboarded and that they can, you know, start their work, right? But starting the work means I need to find a place to live, right? So nowadays, more and more companies are faced with this challenge of we need to start thinking of or building partnerships, alliances with us or with other companies to, to solve that uh, particular need. And, and so um, on a small scale, it's pretty simple, right? You have one worker who just comes and then a company needs to find a suitable a suitable uh, a solution for them, right? On a large scale, it becomes way more difficult because they come in bulk, right? So people just come 15, 20 people, they are just traveling or like arriving at the same time almost. And that is a way more difficult uh, challenge. And now imagine that you have to do this cross locations, right? So um, oftentimes you have some companies that they work globally, meaning they have a global department that handles the mobility of their workers globally. And then you have some companies that they do this more locally. So every local entity, they have their own department who handles this part. And so finding 20 apartments, right, is it on a short term on a short-term period is incredibly difficult for an HR procurement department or mobility department. So that's why they actually uh, need a service like ours where they can, they know it's a reliable source, meaning that they can with confidence bring the worker to ARCA and they know that they can take care of the admin part. And then, you know, we are more like a bus stop before you find your long-term rental because our service is made, um, more made for the, one, two, three month solution or even or shorter in this case, right? So um, that's kind of the averages where we normally tap into. So, yeah. And maybe the last point um, uh, is that um, our goal is really to streamline as much as possible this process for the corporates so that we can allow them to, that this task become as easy as possible, right? That's kind of like really the, the goal and, and when we work with uh, these groups and, and the feedback that we also get from them. Yeah. Thank you. And on the other hand, I mean, uh, your client, is it the employee or is it the corporate? Or is it the corporate who is initiating it, taking over a little bit, uh, of, let's say the setup costs, and then the employee is taking over the recurring fees or how is it generally working because i guess many of the viewers who like to attract talent and as you said yourself talent is uh, one of the bottlenecks in Luxembourg is housing yeah. so um, they all think about them but they also think of their how shall i say of their pnl <laughs> So um, where where is it located? Is it or is it uh, something which is offered as a perk to the employee? I, I guess it's also depending on the size of the company. So and w eventually, what could be done to enable also smaller entities to offer this as a perk? I mean. It, need has there are there things which need to be adapted in the tax system in the incentive system in luxembourg or so um the last point is a very interesting uh, question and i think uh, i mean we can we could elaborate on this i think the, maybe the um i do believe attracting talents is one of the most important thing every nation has to accomplish uh, because um, when there's a brain drain or like other aspects where uh, this is what uh, every nation wants to prevent and they want to create an environment that really, um, you know, it, like promotes the fact of moving there or working in that. And Luxembourg so far has been always very, very uh, strong in this. And that's why we have been thriving over the last years. Um, so, so generally, I mean, companies today... Um, 
it very much depends on the size again uh, and it depends on the level of the employee right so depends on the obviously if you're a senior uh, position and you you have a, a wife and two kids you will the fact of moving or taking that position into a new market is, is a way bigger uh, move than if you you know you just finished um, um, university and like you're you know coming into as coming in as a junior so there are differences in terms of um, budget allocations usually from companies and then um, and then some company it depends on the policy some companies they they offer that as a relocation package that's kind of how they call it um, I believe it, it is a um, it is a in markets like Luxembourg and if you really want to go and attract you need to support uh, the worker to to find an adequate solution. And you, you even want that because by doing so, you will have someone who's more productive, who can have an easier start, who will have a way better experience. And and I've, I have spoke to many uh, uh, relocating employees and when the company did not support them, it was a terrible experience for them. They were they were somewhere local. They had no idea because they don't know the market, right? They, ha they don't know uh, where to go and what to search for. And Arca is kind of their first touch point. So we are the first group that you meet as a newcomer, and 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 so for us, it's we are very proud of being able, I mean, to to really show you ideally how also Luxembourg uh, is and and provide you with an amazing uh, uh, location and experience. So so that's what we always try to do the most. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And on the other hand, I mean, uh, when you look, see how it has evolved, especially your service portfolio has evolved, uh, has it become more resource intensive? I mean, when I say resource, it's overall, it's people, it's money, it's anything of ops or so, or is it still something where you would say, okay, we did our base well, we streamlined it, we have a good base, uh, we have a good system, and uh, it was flexible and modular so that uh, we could cope with the demand, with the growth, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is this is very much... It depends on the vision of the company. So our vision is to scale, right? So our vision is to bring, make Arca a, a multinational organization. And we are, we have the first uh, apartments actually in Amsterdam. We are planning to go to Paris and Berlin. So we are moving into an international organization. And that's also how we make decisions today. So we, we try to make the decision today with the idea of the next three to five years in mind. So... And our goal is to become one of the biggest players in the industry that provides this kind of solution to millions of people at the end of the day. So it's really um, at the core, that's what we strive for. And um, and obviously linked to this vision and mission, we, we invest accordingly to make this also happen. So it is now more resource intensive, intensive but... Currently, we we are investing a lot so that we can actually scale faster. So our current investments are done in a way, and, and team setups and, and process flows are done in a way that we can move into the scaling mode um, and that we can duplicate our um, system and, and, and brand in multiple locations. So, And uh, if we didn't have that goal, our uh, we are very cost effective with the way how we work and and the way how we operate uh, so that's what what arkham makes it really unique because um the way how we streamline our processes is very well organized so and and here we we like to work like in a clock so where things really they uh they they're very uh, systemized um, i mean you never have a perfect you know you always need to fine tune a clock too but uh, but in general uh, we that's really what we what we focus on. So yeah. Thank you. You touch up on something which may be interesting for the the, the grinders out there. You set up in Luxembourg, and for you, was it interesting or maybe also important 
to stop in a market like Luxembourg in order to learn, to have to try in an arrow to get a certain credibility? Or would you say if, uh, yeah, you could also have started in another city, in another country? Um, what are your thoughts about that? Because very often, uh, if you start your venture, either you have immediately an international market view or you start in your local national market in order to find you in the product and so on. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that we started in Luxembourg specifically for our business was very, very well and very good. Um, I wouldn't say that... Uh, I think the market you launch is quite important because sometimes your idea, you need traction, you need first success, you need uh, you need uh, the credibility and also the, the revenue to actually pay for your expansion, right? So choosing the right market is definitely um, is definitely important, and luckily uh, for us, Luxembourg provided us really with the uh, correct like demand and need you know because if we had the, our product arca would have been different if we i mean it would it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have evolved probably into the same today if it wasn't for the way how um, the insights we could gather from luxembourg right so our entire strategy and growth is very much impacted by that um that's not for our case in, in particular so Nowadays, uh, depending on the the business you do, right, uh, you don't technically like the, the uh, you have solutions that you don't need to focus only only on one single solution. You can depend if you have a tech solution, if you have a platform, you can you know launch multiple different uh, solutions. But you always need you always need to identify wh what is like my customer, right, and where do I have the biggest success or probability of success. Uh, to to reach that customer and convert it and and in event, eventually convert as many sales as possible and that you need to um, cross check where and and now the reasons why we picked the new locations where we want to grow right uh, of uh, Amsterdam Paris and Berlin this is because we have uh, uh, we spoke to our existing customers and we follow our demand so we follow actually our existing customer base into these new markets because we know our probability of success is the highest there. So we wouldn't launch in a small city, but we would go where we know that uh, with the existing network, we can we can kickstart as quickly as possible. And I think that's the same every founder needs to do. You need to identify your customer group. You need to be very close with them to understand to the detail of what they exactly need. And then you need to analyze the market in terms of where can I have the highest probability of success, you know, comparing competitors, uh, market dynamics, prices, you know, um, and also where can you get the most revenue, right? Maybe you can go into a market where, you know, competitors are lower, but if, if your revenues are like, you make certain decisions based on, on these things as well. So, yeah. Thank you. And on the other hand, um, if you look at the clients or customers you had and have now, um, have there been some clients, customers where you noticed, oh, okay, maybe that's not the perfect fit as a client or customer. And so you adapted that. Uh, I mean, in the beginning, you uh, touch on that you have been uh, talking to your users, to potential users and so on to identify the need. But uh, very often in the life of a venture is you have customer, take customers on board, but then sometimes there are some customers where you notice, okay, my product service fit is not the one they are needing, or maybe there's something which is not fitting. Um, did it happen to you? And if yes, how did you go about it? I think you always have um, uh, there are always cases where you will be in a meeting and various customers will request various things right so your services maybe your product is not perfectly adapted to 
their needs, right? Um, and there you, I would do the similar exercise that focus on the group that pays the most and then, and then uh, try to cater or make your product into, into, you know, to fit exactly their needs, right? So you cannot, because you cannot serve everyone, right? You cannot serve uh, uh, every single customer. So you need to, you need to make decisions and you need to filter uh, what, uh, what you really go for. And I think here, here I would say that um, the way how we do it is that moving forward more and more, we tap into a niche, which is the corporate rental. And sooner or later, we will develop sub-brands inside of those niches, right? So we have a more high standard corporate rental, and then we have a more low budget corporate rental to attract seniors and juniors. Eventually, we will also go into the luxury uh, section where Arca will have a completely luxurious experience, which is less volume driven. So it's not as it's less, you know, helping a company of to to find, you know, 20, 30 apartments for their workers. But it's more of these high net worth individuals that we want to attract. So your product can also change, and you can. But but this makes only make, this makes only sense once you once you successfully you know, ventured into one market and you, you gained enough market share, right? This doesn't make sense. Otherwise, you spread yourself too thin. So you focus first on one group and you try to follow follow where the most money goes, right? <laughs> and then uh, and then afterwards, you, you, you can fine-tune and you can tap into new groups and, and new, new product types, let's say. And now coming to one of the points every venture also, uh, as the technology is uh, human resources. I mean, uh, you were a founding team, and as I understood it, the founders are still active. So, um, how did you grow if you grow uh, your, I mean, from the human resource side? Uh, did it, uh, what, what was the trigger? To get more people on board, let's call it like that. What was the point where that uh, you said, okay, oh, now you need to we take to, we need to take other people on board because we cannot cope it all ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we at Arca we grew in a very lean way, right? So we always used the existing revenue that we generated to pay for the growth. Uh, now is the first time where we actually. Uh, uh, raising and you know bringing in investors like we're raising capital and we bring in investors to accelerate that growth. But so far, all of our um, entire growth was self-funded and it was uh, and it was healthy, meaning like we were profitable every year. Um, we used the money to regenerate it and uh, to re-put it and reinvest it into the business. And the moment where you notice that you have too much. If you can always respond to every customer, at the moment you notice that it's too much work, you cannot, uh, you have an influx, and uh, that's a good time to think about let's let's hire, you know. So um, I think uh, we were lucky to um, to actually complement each other so well as founders, so that we could complete certain. Because if you can all do the same thing, right, then. Um, then it's, then you need to have other you need to hire other people to uh, compensate you or complement you right so but since we were able to kind of split our tasks in a very well well we could launch without the immediate need to actually hire someone but that can vary from business to business right so the founding team ideally is a team that is able to successfully launch an MVP so that the MVP can uh, gain traction. And then the moment you have traction, you have validation. And when you have validation, you can also take the risks on, on hiring and, and, and investing, right? Because building a team is a risk that you drive up the cost. So you need to be able to, and that initial phase, right? You want to keep it as lean as possible until you have enough validation um, that, that allows you to go in with a confident decision on, hey, now we let's build a team. We want to accelerate the growth. And, um, but that can be different. Some startups, they have, uh, like, they, they are backed, right? They have, they have money to spend. So, so depends on the project. You can also go full speed immediately. And then, uh, um, so we did it in a more lean way. Um, and we are, let's say, different 
I think a lot of startups nowadays, they only focus on valuation and not on profitability, which is something I, I think that got hammered a lot in the last years. Um, so, so we are fortunate enough that we build it in a way where we can be profitable. And in this way, at the same time, we're building up a high valuation. So that is always a very good thing to have in business where you, where you, um, you know that the way you build it is not only to, you know, spike up the valuation, but it's actually, we are making green numbers and we can grow in a healthy way. Thank you. We're now coming to the end. So now I'm going uh, a little bit the hint side on the foresight. With uh, on the hint side, uh, I you said it was your first anniversary. So you launched during the, the pandemic or just before or after. Um, how did that affect uh, not the business per se, but the, your the vision of your venture did it affect the vision of the venture on the one hand and then also staying at hindsight if you look back at this venture now with arca properties uh with hindsight are there things you would have done differently if i mean mm -hmm. um so first point we are a COVID kit so we were born in the COVID times. I mean, we launched our first kind of test product was in summer, end of summer 2019. And we really launched the activity in winter 19. So four months later, COVID hit. And it was an interesting time because you were forced to think differently, right? So um, a lot of companies in our industry, well, they went bankrupt, uh, they, they got out of business. And that's those are very unfortunate stories and um again here your market environment plays a big role so and you need to completely be able to radically shift your approach so if you are very rigid in one way and if you cannot flexibly change direction then um that's not good so you need to be very ad agile and dynamic you know and in, in how, how you do things and so and i think that it really forced us to think differently and um and and yeah and, and cater to entirely new uh, demands right and this is something that i think uh, impacted the vision for sure um, um it's also interesting because it forced us to work very lean right so i think in some way the way we worked we had to pay really a lot of attention to the decisions that we do so maybe that you know in, in hindsight that's something that you know positively impacts positively, if I can say that, impacted uh, the, the growth. Um, and what is amazing is so far, you know, we have been, we have had this kind of growth and success, even, uh, uh, even in times of COVID. So for us, it's actually the most exciting times are still ahead. And that is something where uh, we are very much looking forward uh, since it's, uh, yeah, since ARCA, um, I think never really, not so far, not even tapped into their full potential yet. So I think we can do we can do way more uh, than, than what we have accomplished so far. And um, and sorry, you have to repeat. What was the, la the last part of the question? Um, no, it said that one. Uh, you got it to the to the hint side. You got it. And now if you ah, do, do what it, I would, yeah, what I would, would, uh, what would, you have would, would have done if anything differently. But you touched already on permit because you mm -hmm. said uh, flexibility and so on. No. Or is there something where uh, where you say, okay, uh, that's something I would like to put forward? Mm, I think uh, obviously you can always do f things better. There, no path is perfect, and nothing is is uh, is, a, is a golden line, and you always have uh, multiple directions that you take. And we. I think we have always done the best we could with the knowledge and the, the insights that we had. So we always, with what we have got, we have done the best in that particular moment. So, and um, today with the same knowledge I have, I would have done things differently at the time, but at that time we have decided with the best. Uh, and as a founder as well, you grow as an individual and you grow. Uh, and that's something that at the core, we really always want to, as a, in a team and like we want to build a team which kind of like more like a tribe culture and where we always motivate and you know promote uh, 
personal growth, uh, mentally, physically, emotionally. Those are all things that we really like uh, emphasize uh, inside of the organization. And um, so I would say that with the knowledge today, I would have done things partly different, right? And we would have maybe grown, uh, but but you can't you can't do that because at the time you just you just knew you you didn't know the same things you know today, right? So so I think that we have always tried to do the best decisions with the with the things we knew at that particular time. And now for the foresight, how would you how do you see? the the further path of Arker. You are touching already on often that the different uh, service layers or tiers and also the different market. Is there something where you would say, okay, that is also something where we eventually will aim to? So at the core, so again from a hospitality brand point of view, we want to become the best host. So our we drive the development and innovation um, inside of the company to really create an amazing experience for our tenants, right? Because that's at the core of what we do. So we will tap in more and more into a tech company. So we are already tech uh, driven and we have our own platform and other aspects that we're developing, but we are more and more um, investing in this, in this direction. And ultimately, um, Arca really, uh, our goal is to become a, a worldwide known brand in this industry and, and operate uh, thousands of apartments and buildings worldwide and, um, and to create uh, value, value for uh, shareholders, for um, property owners, funds, uh, um, you know, other aspects that, you know, because by creating more value, value for a customer, value for our clients, like we want to be really value driven for everyone who, participates in our chain and um, and the chain can be stretched right the chain can be stretched in almost in infinitely right on um, when you think uh, on how amazon started as a book uh, as a bookstore online you know the way how we want to build a, a real estate park and have all of these things uh, even ownership you know owning one time the assets and and other aspects but those are really long-term visions of the company um, but the goal is to make it a multinational um, uh, worldwide known brand and that operates in in very various directions, vertically or horizontally. But we where we include new uh, new new products, services, and and really become this you know, park. It's almost like a group and park that this uh, has a big impact in the real estate and short term rental space. Thank you very much. Now you gave us something. You gave uh, the startup community. Uh, really wealth of insights and so on. And as a community, I mean, not only Luxembourg, but uh, worldwide, what would the grinders in startup grind be able to assist you, or provide you? I mean, becoming clients, customers or so. Uh, what is this, uh, the a value that the network of startup grind could eventually provide you? Um, well, I haven't thought about that, to be honest. So, uh, but um, I love the aspect of a community, right? So for me, the fact that I can sh speak here today and share my, my, my insights um, and people get inspired from that, that is already something that you give me in return. So I'm, um, I'm, very, um, I'm very much motivated by... Um, the philosophy of the of, of the community you have, uh, Steve, and, and and as you said at the beginning of the call, it's really like uh, connect, inspire, and and you know what I would say is like try to pay it forward. Today I just came from a school presentation where I had like thirty kids in front of me, and I told them what it means to be an entrepreneur. So I like I like to you know give back uh, to the community, and eventually, look, uh, if you want to work with us, and if you see that uh, we have a we have a concept we can collaborate with and we can make more, we can create more value together. That would be amazing, right? So if we now tap into new cities and we bring out new products and you have something that we can plug plug into, right? Or vice versa. I think that would be something that, because um, eventually the more smart minds are working on one product, the better the product becomes. And and I think your community has something very special and, uh, and um, 
I would love to connect uh, yeah, with everyone around the, the, the globe and see how we can, you know, plug and play and, and create more value, uh, not only individually, but even, you know, together as a union. So I think that's a, it's a great uh, opportunity. So I'm happy and open to, to, to elaborate that further if, if the day comes. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Giacomo, for sharing with us today. And um, this closes uh, the way, uh, our today's fireside chat. And also, uh, thank you, dear Grinder, for being with us. And hope to see you soon at another fireside chat. Thank you. Thank you, Steve.